I am going to bring Bill. Can you come up and tell us about Saturday? Saturday is a, an event called Career Camp here on College of the Canyons. And uh, this is near and dear to my heart. And this is where I met Kathleen and where I met Toastmasters and joined Toastmasters. But what it is, it's, a, it's an opportunity to speak and share with job seekers or, or people who want to um, raise their, their job game come to a career camp and have all kinds of uh, little seminars or breakouts to go to and that's where we come in. We have that event, you actually go to the event and you sign up that particular day to teach an event and I thought in this case we would teach how to answer the tough interview questions or what we call table topics. Does everybody have one of these? Um, uh, yeah. Could you get a few more? Sorry. 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 This is going to be fun. My favorite part of every Toastmasters meeting is called Table Topics. Mm -hmm. And what normally happens is a Table Topics master comes to the front of the room and has a set of questions and then asks the audience, the members of Toastmasters and guests, to answer those questions in one to two minutes. Impromptu just like in an interview. You don't know what you're going to be asked in an interview. Are you going to be asked, why do you want this job? Are you going to be asked, tell me a little bit about yourself? Some questions are more uncomfortable for interviewers than other, for the interviewee than others. When I did a panel here at COC, I was surprised at what people said the most uncomfortable interview question was. I don't know what they are for you, but we're going to reverse that role today. I've been in Toastmasters for two years and I've been doing table topics for two years. And table topics in Toastmasters teaches you to come up with those statements with poise, clarity, grace, and to turn the tables around so that the people you're speaking to go, oh wow, I remember what you said. And that's the most important thing. You want to go into that interview and Get that person who you've interviewed with, you want them to remember, I remember you at the first level interview. That's what you want to come away with. This may be a little bit hard for some of you, but I'm going to start with some people in the room that are a little bit more proficient at doing this. Karen, would you pick a question, if you were interviewing me for a job, would you pick a question that you'd ask for me? The only criteria I ask is that you tell me what the job is so that I'm prepared because everybody in the room is applying for different kinds of employment. So tell me, you're applying for this job and then ask me the question you want me to answer. Okay. Um, you're applying for a job uh, in which you will be uh, in the HR department but specifically interviewing your type people, you know, the people who do your job in uh, social media and that sort of thing. Okay. Okay. Um, 
Cersei, why did you choose this company? Why were you interested in this company working for us? Thank you for asking me here for the interview. And I would like to tell you that before I came and applied for this job, I researched your company online. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of information out there, and I discovered that you are people-oriented, which is something that I'm interested in, and that your company seems to be more interested in the quality of the employees as opposed to the skill set, and that your company looks to people that they can train into their likeness, as opposed to bringing people in who already know who they are. You want people in your company that are like malleable, want to be like you. That's the kind of job I'm interested in. Thank you. Somebody else want to ask? What's your worst, worst interview question? Ask, you can ask from, this list, by the way, is some of the most common questions asked in an interview. So you can pick one here. Yes. I have trouble with what didn't you like about your last job, or um, what I was asked at my last interview was, what would you change about your job? And for that one, obviously I had a million things <laughs> I wanted to say, but I, I believe my English teacher told me you shouldn't completely bag on your job. I'd love to tell you everything that I experienced at my last job. But it would take a long time. And what I really want to tell you is that I was laid off because the company was downsizing. I would have stayed there. I love staying with one company for a long time. I choose companies carefully that I interview with. And I liked so much about working for another person that I wished I could have stayed. In my experience, there are always good and bad about every job. I focus on the good. I focus on the things I can do, and within my capacity, the things that I can do well, so that I can make my job, in my experience, better. This way, every time I get up on Monday morning and the clock says, get ready for work, I'm happy to go. That's the kind of employment I'm looking for, and that's why I sought you out as a company. Wow, pretty good, huh? You're hired. You're hired, woman. You do need to be prepared. If you did not like your company before, if you did not like being there, never give that tell. Always smile and remember something good. Remember something you enjoyed. In here, you don't have to say it in specifics. In fact, generalities are so much better. But when you think of something good, your face, your countenance, and everything will smile and you'll be happy to answer the question. We're at 10.30. Okay, one more question, then we'll call it off. quits. Yes, Bill. It's a pretty common one, and for people who have been looking for a while, and they might ask, you know, why is there, a, looking at your resume, why is there a, a year gap or whatever gap in your work history? What happened for those that's 10 months? Or whatever. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some of us have those gaps. Yeah. I have a gap in my work history for a really good reason, but it was more personal. I am now seeking qualified employment for myself. I have, during my gap, been educating myself, going to school, improving my viability as an employment uh, and as an employee for you. When I was working before, I didn't have time to educate myself. I didn't have time to produce me better. And now I feel I'm ready to go look for a job and to find something that really suits my employer and myself, both through my education and my personal growth. Wow. I don't think there's anything we could throw at you and be able to answer. <laughs> when my father would sit us around the dinner table, I was very little, there were three of us. His fun was doing what I now know is table topics. But he would throw out a question to the three of us. Now I was, when I remember this, I was about five. <laughs> and my brother was a year and a half older and my sister was two and a half years younger. Now my sister was too young to really answer these questions my dad would come up with. Because he loved to read the encyclopedia, the newspaper, you never knew what would come up. <laughs> but because I loved my father dearly, I wanted to be the one answering the question. Now, even though my brother was a year and a half older and should have maybe taken that role, 
he was a little intimidated by, by my dad. So I often got to answer the questions. It was like, what's the third planet from the sun? Do you know? Or how many presidents have we had in the United States so far? Wow. How would a five-year-old know that? <laughs> but a five-year-old responding to that might say, I don't know, but the last president is Dwight D. Eisenhower, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Because it's not the answer with facts. It's the answer with poise. It's the answer with confidence. Oh. When you are in an interview, and you are being asked questions, if you truly know who you are, and what you like, and what you want, and what you're going after, and you remember that inside, you're going to be ready to answer anything. Remember, you don't have to answer with any details. Always answer with something that pleases you, and it'll come off as pleasing. I'll tell you a quick little story. The job that I got that I was with for five and a half years, I didn't want. But I interviewed for it, because I needed a job I had not worked in at least five years. But I got a divorce. Actually, it was 10. I got a divorce, now I'm seeking employment. I'm a little older. They're looking for some cutesy for this job. I was interviewing against a whole bunch of people. I didn't want this job, but it was a job that I knew I could do. Without skills, I knew I could do it. I went into the first interview, answered all the questions, left the interview. I got called for a second level interview. Shocked. I'm going, what's he, hire what's he calling me back for? And I got called in on the same day as a young black man who was interviewing as a chauffeur for this guy. So I walk into the office. I didn't care if he hired me at all. I knew who I was. I knew what my capabilities were. And the first thing out of his mouth was, oh, you're not who I thought you were. But he had my resume in front of me. You know what I said to him? I wonder if you could take Polaroids of your interviews so that you knew and you could put them with the resumes. And then we started talking. That was it. I knew who I was. I wasn't being sarcastic. I wasn't criticizing. I was offering him a solution. Obviously, by offering something as a solution to a problem he had, he saw something in me, and I was hired. Wow. Mm -hmm. you not. You got to know who you are. Yeah. That's the key. Yes. Uh, I, could I add just one more thing that I think is really important? Uh, right now, they're doing uh, virtual interviews on the phone. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah phone interviews. Skype, yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. But on the phone, you know, you think, oh, this is easy, you know, nobody's seeing me, anything like that. But the fact is that you will get yourself up and going. When you're doing a phone interview, get up, get dressed, comb your hair, put your makeup on, just the same, and do the interview as if you were there. Also, on the phone, get up and stand when you're interviewing. Now, don't pace like you're nervous, <laughs> but stand up, and because it, you have so much more energy when you're standing up, and those are the things that will fall down when you're at home. Your energy will fall. And smile. Smile where you're, when you're talking on the phone because, I don't know, somehow that smile can be heard. Now, do they usually, because I've never had a phone interview before, do they usually tell you, we'll call you at this particular day and time to interview you over the phone, or is it usually an impromptu kind of thing? They, they usually can, call. They make usually an appointment. do. Oh, okay. Hi, you guys can come in. Wow. All right. Lots of good information. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say very good. Yeah.